Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Ask Pastor Keith, uh, where today the question for Pastor Keith is, uh, you know, with a lot of voices that we hear in media, uh, a lot of different philosophies and things that we hear from podcasts, uh, in the midst of all these different voices that we're hearing, uh, I guess the question is then, um, how do we best determine uh, who is a false teacher or somebody who may be misleading the congregation? Like, how do we determine and discern those things? Okay, good question. Uh, two things I want to uh, define. Uh, first is truth. Um, so, uh, capital T truth is Jesus Christ himself. I am the truth, he said. In fact, he can change the situation to fit into his truth. When the son of a widow died, uh, to us, his death is end of the road. He raised him from the dead. He changed the reality and truth. So, ultimately, he is a truth. He's a creator. Now, that means there's a capital T truth, but there's also small t truth. And all truth belong to him. So there's some, uh, let me give you an example, like Newtonic formula for uh, gravity. Uh, that worked for a while, but until the quantum mechanics, <clears throat> subatomic level, it doesn't work that way. Um, cryogenics, extreme temperature, it doesn't work that way. So we need quantum mechanics formula for that. So it is small t truth that works in a certain context and certain period of time. But this truth change as the time changes, so as science and everything else. So um, there, there, are, there could be a lot of people from all over the um, internet and other fields of philosophy or even religion that truth work for a while or in a special context, it is still truth. Now, those small t truth uh, are valid. We can learn from anybody, right? Work ethics and the morality and all these things. That's fine, but it has to uh, be vetted through the biblical truth, the revelation of God's word, uh, and capital true, uh, T truth. So therefore, uh, listening to uh, people, philosophers, and all that. And, and uh, in fact, a couple of sermons ago, I, I quoted Nietzsche, <laughs> you know, of all the philosophers. And he spoke truth in that, in that particular uh, setting. So it could happen in that way. Um, but nevertheless, a uh, Bible is, is the truth, uh, and capital T, truth. And uh, we have to vet through all that. With that said, the uh, Bible talks about false teachers, false prophets, false apostles. And when the Bible uses the word false, it implies moral intent. It's not just wrong information, but intent to sway people away from God and God's purpose. Therefore, um, if I teach 2 plus 2 is equal 8, uh, I'm not a false teacher. I'm an erroneous teacher or teacher who's incompetent. Uh, and we should not mix these words because when you say somebody a false teacher, we are accusing of a malicious uh, intent, an ulterior motive, a moral value we are associating with that person. And I don't think it's fair. Many times we are uninformed. And I think all the preachers or the philosophers, even teachers, they taught false certain times because just they're uninformed or ill-informed. Uh, so uh, calling them all false teacher is not a fair thing to do. Uh, however, there are times that the incompetent teachers could end up a false teacher because the content they have taught actually moves people away from the Lord, uh, from you know, their uh, spiritual journey then uh, unintentioned, uh, without intending to be, they become a false teacher. But it's a rare case. So we will not call anybody a false teacher unless we can prove that person has an uh, ulterior motive. Like Paul says false teachers, uh, Galatians, and all these uh, people with the motive, uh, they, they either reputation or greed uh, or self-righteousness, uh, they use uh, the tradition and the um, ritual uh, to, to prove themselves in the right. Uh, those were, uh, the, it is implied, their moral uh, you know, corruption, so to speak. 
So in that special cases we use, but a, a, apart from that, we should be very careful not to call anybody false teachers. All right. Well, thank you so much for that <laughs> clarification, Pastor Keith. Okay. Really appreciate it. All right. All right.